uh, indication when to do only PLF. But for me, the question which I have been put through, when is circumferential fusion better than posterolateral fusion? Answer is very simple. It always. So you don't have to think when to when. Um, the question which I think we should ask is uh, when you should not do an interbody fusion, or the other question which can, we can ask when you can get away without doing interbody fusion, and the uh, third question is when we when it is must to do an interbody fusion. We will try to get the answer to these questions. Now, interbody fusion has a lot of advantages. It provides a large surface area in the interbody area where you can put your graft and you get a good surface for the fusion. And then the, the surface is also uh, better in terms of the fusion bed. You get a good cancellous bone where you, uh, and you can decorticate it. You can uh, remove the uh, cartilaginous end plate and you get a good uh, bleeding bone there where you can uh, have the um, graft uh, fuse nicely. The other main advantage, the graft is in the compression mode. Rather than being an overlay graft, which is there lying just posterolaterally, you are, your graft in the interbody area is in, is in compression mode. So the graft healing potential is much better. If you are using a cage also, now this thing is very important. You don't necessarily have to, when I'm talking about interbody fusion, I'm not talking about using a cage. Interbody fusion is just putting the graft in the interbody area. You may or may not put the cage. But if you are putting the cage also, then you are providing better uh, biomechanical stability to the construct, so it de-stresses the screws and prevents their failure in terms of the loosening or uh, breakage. And when you are putting a cage, you are jacking up the interbody area, so you actually do some indirect decompression and your nerve roots, exiting nerve roots become more open. So you don't have to uh, make your uh, decompression very extensive. There are some disadvantages. Uh, it takes some additional time. There is some additional cost involved if you are using a cage. Uh, you need some additional training and expertise and not everybody may be comfortable in the beginning of their practice to do an interbody fusion. And then there are some procedure related complications like blood, additional blood loss. There might There is a chance of you might damage some neural tissue while putting the cage or graft in. You can have some dural tears also. Uh, but uh, these disadvantages are not much as we'll discuss further. Surgical techniques have uh, evolved in the past as uh, discussed by Siddharth from only decompression to non-instrumented fusion to instrumented postulateral fusion to instrument, instrumented interbody fusion with or without cage. Now, if fusion is a fusion, whether it has happened in the interbody area or at the facet joint or in the uh, intertransverse area or postulateral, but the thing is that uh, the thing which we are really discussing is the best, where is the best probability of the fusion happening? Depending upon the local environment provided to the bone graft, and depending upon the biomechanical nature of the construct, and also depending upon the fusion material which we are using. It's a race between the fusion happening, which will happen first, whether the fusion will happen first or whether your implant is going to give way. So earlier the fusion happens, it's better to the patient. Uh, my experience, which is uh, based on my training, which is based on the experience of my teachers and mentors, which also in, in, uh, involves some amount of logic. It tells me that I, uh, I personally I prefer interbody fusion. It takes about 15 to 20 additional minutes to prepare to, to do the discectomy. To if you are uh, if you are concerned about the additional time, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes extra for one single level to remove the disc, to prepare the uh, um, end plates, and to put the graft and maybe a cage in. I don't see any significant blood loss happening while putting the cage in while doing the discectomy. And I don't see any significant neural issues as compared to the postulateral fusion also. I don't do a big share of postulateral fusion, but there are times when I do only postulateral fusion also. But uh, the difference in terms of any of these additional complications or uh, blood loss or time, I don't find uh, a significant difference between only postulateral and interbody fusion. There are situations when I don't go interbody. In the severely osteoporotic bone, I don't like to do the discectomy and then prepare the uh, end plates because while doing so, uh, there is a chance that I might damage the end plates and then there is a big uh, khadda over there which I am not, I may not be having sufficient bone graft and I am not be able to fill it up with the uh, bone graft and I may not be able to put a cage also because the uh, hard surface where the cage or the bone graft was supposed to rest is gone. Then 
in the post-op period, I'll be always worried about the cage getting migrated and it co uh, causing new compression of the neural tissue as the Dr. Abenene has just showed you. Having said that, I have had had same kind of problem in the postulateral fusion also where the screw breakage, breakage had happened, screws uh, gotten loose, and there was progressive slip with restenosis. Um, sometimes in the revision, so these, these are the things which we are discussing when I would not do an interbody fusion. So in, in the revision cases where there's a lot of fibrosis and uh, through which it's difficult to reach the disc, and where the discectomy and uh, putting a cage or putting a graft will be difficult, I may just skip the uh, interbody part and then I might do just postulate fusion. I have had, I have had dural tears with uh, some neurology involved, but most of these cases were uh, temporary. You can go to, rather than going a PLIF approach, you can take a T-LIF approach and you can avoid the neural structures in the revision cases and then I think still you can, for most of the cases, you can still uh, reach the interbody area. There are certain situations where bone is already resting on the bone. There is no space between the uh, two end plates. So you don't necessarily have to go and uh, you're, you're, you're already seeing the vacuum phenomena. The disc is already ruptured and it's uh, non-existent. So you don't necessarily have to go in and put the uh, uh, graft in over there and uh, jack up the uh, uh, disc height, especially in the cases where you have achieved the good nerve root decompression and you don't need any uh, inter uh, pedicular opening or the foraminal opening. In these cases, sometimes I tend to just do the postulateral fusion. I may not necessarily go in the interbody area. Now, this was my experience part. Now we'll uh, look at the evidence in the literature. So, Bridwell and Harkovich, as uh, Siddharth also mentioned, they both found that the fusion were uh, better than decompression alone. So this part is totally out. Fusion is uh, preferred. But then looking at the transforaminal lumbar in interbody fusion versus ins instrumented postulateral fusion only, they found that the, though the, uh, it took little more time and blood loss, and now many of these things might be statistically significant. But in a two hour surgery, and a two hour, 15 minutes or two, two hour and uh, two and a half hour surgery, this. 15 minutes or 30 minutes additional might be statistically significant, but they may not necessarily indicate that uh, uh, you are doing a very big procedure. It, it just takes little more time, and I think uh, if by doing little more we can give the patient better result, it's uh, always worth going for it. It can cause a li uh, little more blood loss. It, it might take a little more time, but the fusion success rates were much higher when the interbody fusion was done. In the uh, two-year follow-up, the Orthostatic disability index, back pain, and global outcome were much better in the patient who underwent interbody fusion. Um, again, uh, another study from um, uh, General of Craniovertebral Junction, uh, back pain was significantly better in T-leaf group at one and two years. However, they found that there was just one screw breakage in T-leaf group. Um, though there are some studies in, uh, by Hoy et al., they found that whether you do uh, postulateral fusion or you do an interbody fusion, there was no difference in terms of the uh, recovery of the leg symptom, recovery of the back pain, or uh, in terms of the other uh, disability outcomes. In another study, circumferential fusion improves outcome in comparison with the instrumented postulateral fusion. Now, this was a randomized clinical trial. Again, they proved the same thing, that the back pain was much better in the TLA group. Now, why the back pain gets better in the interbody fusion? Because the one thing which we very commonly ignore in India is that uh, discogenic back pain. We think that it's a non-existing entity. But I firmly believe that disc is a major cause of uh, back pain, and unless you remove it, uh, the patient will be, and even though you have achieved the facetal fusion or postulateral fusion, that discogenic pain, if you, if you have not removed the disc, that will be persistent, and that will be one of the major cause of patient persistent uh, symptoms. So in this group, ODI, SF36 were much better, and, but the leg pain was similar, whether you do postulateral fusion or you do an interbody fusion. Now this friend of mine, Kepler, um, they did a study of the national trend in terms of the fusion in US. And what they found was that till 2003, actually 2003 was the peak time when the postulateral fusions were happening. And in about, uh, 10 years after that, about in 2011 or so, they found that the interbody fusion was done equally as uh, the postulateral fusion was done. But the current trend says that more than 80% of the fusions they are doing is uh, they are putting an interbody uh, cage and they are trying to assess, uh, they are trying to achieve uh, 
some fusion in the interbody area, not only for the better alignment, but uh, it, because it also provides increased fusion rate. But the other factor which they mentioned that it also provides better reimbursement. Now, this is one of the major factors. Whenever you study, read a study from U.S., if you, if you uh, in U.S., the, things, the way the things work, you, put, you do one more procedure, you can charge for it. You do single level t lift. You, you, you are going to charge for the decompression, you are going to charge for the discectomy, you are going to charge for the pedicle screw instrumentation, you are going to charge for uh, graft retrieval, you are going to charge for the cage insertion. So if you are doing interbody fusion, then you are going to charge for the discectomy and the cage insertion and the graft retrieval and the graft uh, 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 positioning also. So many of these things are done for the better reimbursement also. So whenever you are reading a study, you, you need to take these factors also into account that Many of these things are driven by uh, finances also. Um, in another study from 2014, 96% uh, uh, fusion rate was found in the uh, PLIF group and 68% only in the PLF group. They found some implant failures in the postulateral fusion group. However, dural tears and transient neuropathies were equal in both the groups. So there is no additional risk to the nerve, uh, nerve tissue if you are going, if you are trying to go entirely uh, in the interbody area. Um, this another interesting study by Dehu, uh, what they found that in a low grade, uh, they did a lot of, uh, uh, I think 52 cases, and they followed up them for six years. So uh, the cases were not randomized. They, they, they just did the cases as per the surgeon's choice, but then at the end of the six years, they studied the patient, and they found that in the low-grade listesis, whether you did uh, postulateral fusion only or you did interbody also, there was no difference in terms of the fusion rate or in terms of the clinical outcome. But in the patient with high-grade listesis, the patient who underwent interbody fusion also, they, they fared much uh, better. Now, one of the important things that cage is not must, which uh, we should all realize that you can achieve the interbody fusion also without the cage, which uh, I tend to do in uh, severely osteoporotic bone. I don't like putting a cage over there. Uh, neural complications and dural tears are uh, similar in the frequency whether you do interbody or not, because many of the people, they will skip doing interbody fusion fearing that they might uh, do some damage to the neural tissue. Implant failures are obviously more in the PLF group, in the postulateral fusion only group, because uh, um, biomechanically you have not done anything anteriorly, so and with time, your disc might keep on collapsing and it will, it will put additional stress on the screw. So they will either become loose or they will break, like in this case. So from my uh, uh, point of view, the take home message should be that in, uh, we should do a PLIF in the primary cases where the bone quality is good in the high demand young patient, where the high, uh, list, uh, listesis is high grade and when there is serious foraminal stenosis and you need to uh, jack up the disc height. But in certain situation, I'll do only postural fusion when there is severe osteoporosis, and I may not necessarily put the cage also in this situation. I'll, um, when there's a lot of fibrosis and difficult to reach the interbody area, I'll do only postural fusion. In bone on bone listesis, if I am able to achieve good uh, foraminal decompression, I may not put, uh, do the interbody uh, fusion, and in the low demand patients. Thank you. <laughs>